Okay, so for this video, let's discuss about cross product between two vectors. So what is a cross product? Cross product is an operation between two vectors wherein their uh, result or the result of this cross vector is orthogonal, orthogonal to both A and B. So that is the definition of a cross product. Uh, the resulting cross product is perpendicular to both vector A and vector B. So how do we find this cross product? Oh, we have this um, we have this definition wherein uh, we are trying to find the, de the determinant of this matrix. So given we have A and B, we just substitute the values of the entries A1, A2, and A3, B1, and B2, and B3. So this is in order, no? so A should come first before B. And then don't forget the directional vectors or the directional unit vectors i, j, and k. So upon evaluating this, we can see that this is also the same as this uh, definition. And also I will show both of this uh, formula in action. I know. So let's try doing this. Uh, with an example. So vector A is this vector 1, 3, 4, and then we have vector B, 2, 7, and negative 5. So again, to find this, uh, that product of A and B, this is a determinant no, of I, J, and K, and then substituting the values of A here, we have 1, 3, and 4, and then B, we have 2, 7 and negative 5. Now, how do we find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix? So, you can either use for determinants, if you can recall in your linear algebra, you can either use the crisscross, crisscross rule, or you can use the cofactor. So, yeah, to, to recall this, I will utilize both. So, crisscross rule is only applicable for 2 by 2 and 3 by 3. So cofactor is much more universal. It could be utilized for any any size of your matrix, and it is in somewhat way recursive. You know? uh, I won't get into that. I won't get into that word anymore. But uh, Chris, uh, Chris Cross rule is only applicable for two by two, three by three matrices only. So okay, let's try doing the Chris Cross rule. Now, so the Chris Cross rule, you will just have to repeat repeat these first two columns. We have uh, we have I. And then 1, 2, and then J, and then 3, and 7. And then you will do the crisscross. No? So cross and then cross later. So this will be equal to, so multiplying this, we have negative 15, negative 15 I. And then we have plus 8 J, and then plus 7 K, right? We multiply this. And then minus, so the crisscross rule, this direction, we have 6k and then plus we have uh, 7 times 4 is 28 uh, i and then last one we have negative 5 j hat okay so doing this entry wise no, uh, to make things faster so we have two like terms here so negative 15 minus 28 okay so this will be equal to so 28 Minus 15, we have 3. Uh, sorry, not, 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 not the 1. We have uh, 13. Yeah. So 13i hat. And then for the j, no? so for the g term, we have 8 and 5, negative 5. So 8 minus negative 5. So this will become positive 5. So this will be plus 13j, right? Oh, sorry. This should be negative, right? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So this should be negative 15. Sorry for our high term. High term we have negative 15 minus 28. So this should be added with each other. So we have 13 and then 4. So this should be negative 43. Okay, my fault. So this should be negative 43. And then, uh, okay, we have already the I and the J for the K. So for the K, the same thing. We have 7 minus 6. 
So 7 minus 6, we have 1. So we have plus just k hat. So this will be your result of your dot product. So this is the long version, no? Sige, let's try doing the cofactor, no? So we already did the crisscross. Let's do the cofactor. Actually, cofactor is much more easier as long as you know the format. So for cofactor, guys, remember the pattern of your signs. So we have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and so on. So this will continue this pattern no, like a checkerboard. So we start with the positive. So now how do we perform this using the cofactor rule? Okay, let's write this first using the cofactor rule. So what we will do here is we can choose any row or any column to utilize for the cofactor method of finding the determinant. So the easiest way is just choose the first row. So what we will do here is we will utilize each of the cofactor of this or we will find the minor, oh sorry, well exactly, we will find the cofactor of this when uh, when we raise this first row and this first column. So we will want to find the determinant of this. We have 3, 4, 7, and negative 5 multiplied by the i, no? the i hat. So since this is positive, therefore, okay, this is positive. And then for the next, so for the second entry here, so since this is negative, this should be minus. Ayan. And then again, so we have J, so we erase this, and then we erase this. So what is left is 1, 2, and 4, and negative 5. So we have 1, 2, 4, and negative 5. And then the J hat, you know? And then for the last one, we have K here. So this is positive, so therefore this should be plus. And then erase this one, erase this one. We have a 1, 3, 2, 7, and then the k uh, directional vector. So how do we evaluate this? For 2 by 2 vectors, it is easy to find the, the, the determinant. So basically, crisscross rule. So this will be, we have negative uh, 15. No? So 3 times negative 5 is... Uh, negative 15, and then minus 7 times 4, so this will be 28. Okay, and then I hat minus, so ito, no? 1 times uh, negative 5, so negative 5 minus uh, 8. Then J hat plus, we have 7, and then we have 6, so 7 minus 6, and then K hat. So this will be equal to 43 i hat plus 13 j hat plus k hat. So this will be the same answer as what we have. Sorry, it should be negative, no? As we have using the crisscross rule. Although, no, guys, I only utilize here the, 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 the determinant rule. If this is a 3 by 3, you can still use this. I know this formula. I will not use this anymore since I think this is a little bit hard no, to, to memorize. Although there is a pattern. Yeah. Okay, but anyways, this is a better way of finding, and this is a much more general way of finding the the the, the cross product. Okay, now uh, again, I have mentioned that the cross product of two vectors, uh, the resulting vector is this. A cross uh, B is that this 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 uh this result of this cross product will be perpendicular to our two vectors. So meaning, if let's say this is your A and B, then this should lie on the same plane. Therefore, with with uh with knowing that this that product or this cross product will equal to this value or this length that is perpendicular to both of the vectors. So this will be 90 degrees, this will be 90 degrees. Okay, so the right-hand rule says that your uh, A vector, let's say your A vector is your thumb, your B vector is your uh, middle finger, then your resulting of cross product will be this thumb. 
sorry, this is your forefinger, no? So your forefinger is A, your middle finger is uh, B, and then the cross, your cross product of these two vectors will be your thumb. So that is the representation of the cross product, again, no? Using this graph. So uh, one property of the cross product is that the, the length, of the relation of the length of this cross product is equal to the length of A and B times sine theta. Now, I will show this later on with an example in finding the area of a parallelogram. So, uh, let's have an example here. Uh, find the vector perpendicular to the plane that passes through the points P, U, and R. Again. Okay, so how do we do this? Mm -hmm. So we can imagine, you can plot these points. You can plot each of these points to get an overview of what is happening here. So this is your positive x, this is your positive y, this is your positive z. Okay, so this x extends through the negative, your y extends through the negative. You can plot each of this. So I'll just approximate where they lie, guys, no? so that we can save time. So somewhere here is, uh, I guess this one is P. And then we have Q. So Q is somewhere in, uh, somewhere in maybe uh, in here, Q. And then R here, we have 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1, and then 1. So somewhere here is R. So we have P, Q, and R. So what we're, what are we trying to find here? We're trying to find this vector perpendicular to this plane. What is a plane, no? That passes through these points. So we want to find a plane that passes through this point. So basically, guys, what is a plane that passes through these points? So we could create a sheet, no? A plane that that contains all of these three vectors. So we can create here this plane wherein all of these three points uh, lie in. Yan. And then what we're trying to find is that there should be a vector that points in a direction perpendicular to that. So let's say, let's just imagine that uh, this, this vector is this. Ayan. So somewhere here will be a vector that is perpendicular. Now, how do we do this? So, what we can do is connect these dots to create, to create a, create a what? To create a vector. No? So, let's say we, have, we want to create a vector here, PQ, and then this PR. So, we can create a vector so that uh, one of, uh, of a vector, of the vectors, will be perpendicular to that. So this will be a perpendicular vector uh, relating to that. So if we look at this in this direction or in the side view, this will look like this. So this, 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 uh, this sheet here will be infinitely thin, okay, infinitely thin. And then somewhere here in between are the points P, uh, Q, and R. So let's say this is R, this is, P and this is Q and the cross product actually of this, no, this is the perpendicular line or the perpendicular vector that we're trying to visualize here, which is just the cross product of this PQ and this PR. So we have PQ here, this is your PQ, and this is your PR. So the cross product of these two vectors are P and P R. Ayan. So this is your cross product. Now how do we find this cross product? We want to first create our vectors. Now how do we create our vectors here? Okay, so PQ vector is equal to the difference between these two vectors. So, so what is the final point here? We want to have the final point as... What? So PQ. So the final point is Q here. So this should be negative 2 minus 1. Okay. And then this is for the, the I, no? I direction. And then for the J direction, we have 5 minus 4. 
And then plus, we have uh, negative 1 minus 6 for the k direction. So this vector pq, that is equal to negative 3i plus j minus 7k. Yan. Okay, uh, this, should, this, should, this should be positive, right? Okay, this should be, uh, sorry, this should be negative. So we have the first vector pq. And then for this PR, so for the vector PR, we have PR that is equal to, so this is our endpoint, no? As we can see here, the vector here, our endpoint is R. So this should be our second uh, vector. So we have 1 minus 1 for the I direction. And then for the J direction, we have negative 1 minus 4. And then for the p direction, we have minus, sorry, uh, 1 minus 6. So the vector pr, that is equal to 0. So this is just 0. And then we have negative 5j plus, sorry, minus 5k hat. Now, okay, we have already, we have the given vector speak u and we have this vector pr. So we want to now find a vector that is perpendicular to both of these vectors. Or in other words, the cross product of these two vectors, PQ and PR. So the dot product of these vectors are the determinant of their vectors. So we have again I hat, J hat, K hat. And then substitute the values of the vector PQ. So this is your vector PQ. So we'll just substitute here negative 3, 1, and negative 7. And then for your PR, since we do not have an I hat here, so this will be 0, and then negative 5, and negative 5. So now finding the determinant of this to find this perpendicular vector, I'll just utilize the cofactor, guys. No? So I'll utilize the cofactor here. So this will be equal to, so erasing this, no? We have a 1, negative 7, negative 5, negative 5 for the i hat, okay? So this middle term will be negative, so minus, on remembering the, the pattern, the, the sign pattern, so erase this, erase this, we have negative 3, negative 7, 0, and negative 5, j hat. Okay, and then plus k, so k here is, so the last one, delete this. We have negative 3, 1, and then 0, negative 5, and then k hat. Okay, we will not have a uh, space. So let's create another slide. And then find the determinant. So this will be negative 5 minus uh, negative 5 times negative 7. Okay, be careful with this. No? So we have 35. So positive 35. Therefore, this is equal to. So negative 5 minus 35 is negative 40, right? And then for this one, so we have minus, so negative sign here. Minus, we have here negative 3 minus, uh, sorry, negative 3 times negative 5, which is positive 15. So this will be 0. So therefore minus 0, the answer should be negative 15. And then for this last one, we also have negative 15. No? So therefore, your cross product, your the answer for your cross product. So we have P, sorry, uh, we have uh, PQ cross product PR. That is equal to negative 40 I hat minus 15 J hat minus 15 k hat. So this is our final answer. Or we could use another notation. You could say this is negative 40, negative 15, and negative 15 uh, vector. So either of these two will be correct. So this is one of the vectors that represents this uh, vector perpendicular to this plane. But as we can see, we could also say that one of this vector is also perpendicular, no? So some of the vectors here are also perpendicular. So to have a general solution, we could find its basis vector. And also the, the lowest term that we could find, okay, 
So this will be uh, a ratio of, so we divide this by three, we divide this by five, right? So if we divide this by five, we can find the basis vector. So this will be equal to negative 8i minus 3j minus 3k. And if we parameterize this so that the ratio of this will always be the same, we can, param we can introduce a parameter t. So we have 80i hat minus 3t j hat minus 3t k hat. So this will be any vector, no? Any vector perpendicular to the plane uh, of this point PQR. Yeah. So actually, this is just the answer, no? This is just another way of looking at the answer to generalize, generalize your cross product. Ayan. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about again no, this this uh this cross product. So let's just imagine, let's say you want to find the area of our parallelogram using vector A and let's say vector B. So I, I'll just write this down as vector B for now, but it could be vector A as well, no? So we have vector B here, we have vector A, okay. And let's say we want to find the area of this parallelogram. Oh. So to find the area of this parallelogram, what is the formula for that? So the area of a parallelogram is the base times the height, meaning what is this base, the length of this base, and what is this height? So this the height is the base. So how do we find the base? The base here is just the length of your vector A, which is just, which is just uh this notation no? so length of a for the base now what do we find for the height so for the height we have to introduce another variable so the angle in between these two vectors is theta and the height here will be some something no that we could create using a right triangle so let's introduce this as let's say just call this for now uh the length of our d vector so to find for this height, so the height is equal to what, no? So the relationship of these two, three variables will be sine, di ba? So sine theta, which is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, is equal to the length of this hypotenuse over the length, sorry, the length of this opposite over the length of this hypotenuse. So therefore, we can say that sine theta is equal to this t, uh, the length of this t vector and this b vector. Now, we want to find the height. So we know that the height is just the same as saying this is the d vector. So therefore, uh, we can write this again as sine theta is equal to the height over the length of the b vector. Or in other words, the height is equal to the b vector's length times sine theta. So we could write this one. We can substitute this back to our h here. So this will be equal to the length of b times sine theta. Okay. And again, no, this is our definition of, of, of the cross product. Therefore, we could also say that this is the cross product of a and b. So what does this mean? Okay. What is the, what is the meaning of this? So if we find the cross product of two vectors at a and b we are just not all we are just not finding the vector perpendicular to this vector a and b right so this is the vector or the cross product a and b we are also finding the area of this parallelogram okay uh, or actually the to be more specific the absolute value no sorry uh, this should be our absolute value here the absolute value uh the absolute or the length of this this vector will now be the area of this parallelogram connecting these two vectors okay so again this is just the area area of a parallelogram okay so find the area of the triangle with vertices p and q and r given 
Oh, okay, given is this given is from the last problem. So, uh, visualizing this, so let's say we have this, let's say we have this arbitrary drawing of P cube and this PR. So, if you want to find the area of our triangle, so basically the triangle is just this, diba? So, this is what we're trying to look for, this area here, this triangle that connects these two or these three points. Okay, we have this P, we have this U, we have this R. So, this area right here is actually just the half of, of the total area. So, we have this area here, we have this area here, here. And again, the area of this parallelogram it's just the dot product or the length of the dot product of A of this PQ and PR. Okay. So from the last problem, we already found this problem. The prob the, the answer to this uh, from last problem. Okay. From last problem, this is equal to we have negative 40 minus 15 or 240. I hat uh, plus, uh, sorry, minus 15 J hat minus 15 K hat, right? Diba? Why is it positive here? And then uh, we have this, uh, we want to find now the length of this uh, vector. Now, how do we find the length of this vector? We just find the square root of the sum of the squares of each component. So this will be negative 40 squared plus negative 15 squared plus negative 15 squared. So the final answer here, this will be a relatively large number. So this will be 4 times 4 is 15, so 1,600. Plus, so 15 times 15, uh, we have 15 times 15, so 5, uh, this is 7, and then 15, so we have 5, 2, 1, so 225, so 225 here. Okay, so this will be equal to, uh, we have 1600, 225, so 5, 2, 8, 1, so 100. 825 or the square root of 1825. Actually, this is already an answer for me. But to further simplify this, you can do the prime factorization. You, know? you can try doing that. And your answer also, it will take a little bit long. But if you do the prime factorization, so basically you'll just divide this by, let's say, 5. No? So we have, uh, let's say, uh, 1825. Divide this by 5. So this will be, uh, let's say, uh, how do you call this? Uh, this will be another result, and then divide, keep dividing until you get uh, two squares. And uh, if you simplify this, this will become five square root of eighty-two. So this will be a further simplification of the answer. So either of these two is already a final answer for me if you do not have your calculator. Okay. So okay, so that will be all for this example. Okay, again, we are repeating ourselves. So we, we have the result of the dot product A and B. It is orthogonal or perpendicular to both A and B. So therefore, if uh, uh, alternatively, if the dot product of A and B is zero, then A and B are parallel. Okay, so let's try doing this, uh, this property. So show that the, 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 the cross product of A and B is orthogonal to A. So what, how do we find the cross product of A and B? So again, let's say your A, because we have A1, uh, A2, and A3. And then let's say your B vector is B1, B2, and B3. So finding the cross product of A and B, that will be equal to finding the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. And then B1, B2, and B3. And we can find this using the cofactor matrix. So using the cofactor, we have here uh, A, A2, A3, B2, B3, okay? And then I hat. And then again, minus. So this would be minus using the pattern. 
So cancel this out. We have A1, A3, B1, B3, and then J hat, and then plus. So for the last term, we have plus. So cancel this and cancel this. We have A1, A2, B1, B2, A hat, no? And then simplifying this using the crisscross rule. So we have A2, B3 minus B2, or let's just A3 minus A3, B2 na lang, no? Ayan, and then we have minus uh, A1, B3. Okay, and then minus A3, B1, J. And then plus uh, A1, B2, and then A2, B1, K. Um, simplifying this, uh, you can distribute the sign here. So this will become negative, and then this will become positive. So I will write first the positive value. So we have A3, B1, minus A1, B3, plus A1, B2, minus A2, B1, and then K. Okay, so this will be your answer. Now, what's the next thing to do? We want to figure out if this vector, no? so this vector, the cross product of A and B is orthogonal to A. Therefore, we're trying to check if, no, if we're saying that this is orthogonal, then the dot product of these two vectors should be equal to zero if this is orthogonal. So we're trying to find the cross product of this vector and the vector A. So finding the cross product of this, so we will multiply this by a1. So entry wise, and also this will be A1, A2, B3, minus uh, A1, A3, B2. Okay. And then plus, so multiply this A2 with this. So we have A2, A3, B1, minus A1, A2, B3. And then plus, so multiply this A3 by this. Since this is a dot product, we have A1, A3, B2, minus A2, A3, B1. Ah, uh, sorry, B1 lang pala. And then, uh, no, no K anymore. And then simplifying this, so we can actually cancel uh, this one. We can cancel, right? We can also cancel this one. Okay, and we can also cancel this one. As we can see here, we have nothing left. So therefore, this is equal to zero. Therefore, if this is equal to zero, therefore, orthogonal or perpendicular. Okay, so that will be all for this example. All right. Now, uh, with uh, knowing that we have theorems or properties of the cross product, we have the following. So what does this mean? Okay, why, why do I have a link here? I'm sorry, I'll just edit this real time. It should be the answer. You know? So uh, as we can see here, the cross product is actually not non-commutative. Meaning, if we swap the possessions of the cross product of A and B to B and A, therefore, it will not be equal, but it will be an in the opposite sign. And then we have the distributive property. So, C here is a scalar. And then we could also distribute this uh, operation when we have the addition of two vectors. And we want to find the cross product of these two vectors we can distribute this A, but there is a possession incorporated to this, no? Just like uh, matrix multiplication. Similar with this, and this one, and this last one. So this last one is kind of tricky. Unfortunately, I, I can't show you the proof anymore, just to save a little bit of time. But uh, take note of this relationship, okay? So let's move on and uh, 
enforce our understanding of cross products. So let's say we want to find the volume of a parallel pipe of vectors A, B, and C. So instead of finding the area, we could also find the volume. Now, how do we find the volume here? So let's say we have vector A and B and C. Okay, so let's say this is our vector C, for example. This is our vector A. And then let's say we have a vector B here. So we want to find the volume formed by these three vectors. So how do we do that? We can trace them out. We can create some uh, some representation of this uh, parallel pipe. So this is your parallel pipe. And then this one. Uh, this should, should not be like this, no? It should be like this since it is slanted. Again. This one, then this one, and then this one, this, then this, this, and then, yeah. So we want to find the volume of this parallel pipe. How do we find the volume of this parallel pipe? Using cost cross product. You know? So we know that the volume of our, the volume of our parallel pipe is just the area of the cross section. So the area of this cross section. So this portion here is the area, and then multiply it by the height h. So the height here, guys, is the 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 straight line of this. No, so this straight line here is your height. Yeah. So how do we find the area? So the area we already find this using the last problem in finding the area of the parallelogram. So I'm sorry, we don't have a line here. Uh. And it should be skewed, no? Let's skew this by a little bit. Okay, let me draw this again. Yeah, okay. Better, no? So A here, or the area here, is just a cross product, if you could remember, of this two vectors. No, I'll just change this one. Oh, sorry. I'm going to change this one. Uh, okay, let's get. So the area here is equal to the cross product of B and C. Uh, C for this area, and then for the height, no? so as you can see here, if we have this height, if this is the height, and this is your vector A, oh sorry, this should be the absolute value no? for this uh, length. Okay, so for the height, sorry guys, we have here, let's say we, we define here an angle that is, let's say, theta. So the angle here is theta. So the height here is just, we have here a relationship of a right triangle. If this is your A vector, then the length of the A vector has a relationship between this height and this angle theta. So therefore, uh, we have cosine, no? cosine theta, since this is the adjacent uh, side. So H over the hypotenuse, the length of A. So therefore, H is equal to the length of A vector and cosine theta. But take note that cosine theta's domain should be within only from 0 to pi over 2 to make it positive or 0 to 90 degrees. Okay? So that it will, it will always be positive. So we can write here an absolute value if you want or just create, make, make the domain between 0 to pi over 2. So therefore, your, your H here, which will be this, is equal to A and then cosine theta. Okay, now what's left to do? What what's left? Uh, what is left to do here? If you can remember the definition of the dot product, no. The definition of the dot product, let's say the dot product of A and B, that is equal to the length of A times the length of B times cosine theta. And it looks familiar that this is also the case here. We have this two lengths, and then we have cosine theta. So we could mix things a bit. And we can say that uh, our A here is this uh, cross product of B and C. And then this B here is our A, right? So therefore, 
we could uh, say that if this is this form, then this is also the dot product of A, okay, A and the dot product of B and C, or the cross product of B and C. So uh, don't forget the absolute value as well. Since we're trying to look for the the, the volume, you know? So this is the the volume of your parallel pipe. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh discuss this in a bit. We can expand this by finding the, the, the scalar triple product, which is basically when we substitute the A as well to the first row. So instead of IJK, we have another vector A to find a scalar triple product. And uh, what can we what can we say about this? You know, we can know if A and B and C are coplanar. A meaning uh, they, they lie on the same plane, they are coplanar. If their scalar triple product is equal to zero, if this is equal to zero, if they don't have a volume, then they are coplanar. That is basically the scalar triple product. So uh, let's try use, utilizing this to find the scalar triple product of these three vectors to verify if they are coplanar. You know, so what is a scalar triple product? So we have A, uh, the dot product of B and C. So this is equal to substituting A for the first row. So we have 1, 4, and negative 7. For B, we have 2, negative 1, and 4. For C, we have 0, negative 9, and 18. Yeah, so how do we evaluate this, this uh, the determinant? We can utilize a crisscross rule or the cofactor. So I will just utilize the cofactor, guys. So this will be the cofactor. So we have negative 1, 4, negative 9, and 18. Multiplied by, we'll forget the 1. Ano? So you multiply this by 1. So since this is just 1, I will just omit the 1. And then for the next one, we have 4. So this will be negative, no? Kapag uh, second uh, entry. So this will be negative 4 multiplied by this remaining matrix. Ayan. Okay. And then for the last one, we have this. So negative 7. So positive of negative 7. So this will still be negative 7. And then 2, negative 1, 0, and negative 9. So evaluating this by the crisscross rule. So we have uh, negative 18 minus uh, 36, right? Right? Negative 18 minus 36. And then minus 4. Okay, and then uh, this is also 36, right? Okay. So we have 4 times 36 minus 0. And then the last one, we have uh, negative 7. And then this is negative 18. And then simplify. So what do we have here? Okay, uh, I think this should be minus negative 36, right? So minus, I think of something wrong. Something is wrong here. So negative 15, 18 minus negative 36. So this will become positive 36. So this will be 18 minus 4 times 36. And then plus 7 times uh, 18, right? So uh, to make things simpler now, we can write this as 2 times 2 times 4 times 18, right? And we can, we can see this are like terms. So we're just adding their coefficient. So we have the coefficient 1 minus 2 times 4, which is 8. And then plus 7, and then we have 18. 
So simplifying this, we have 1 minus 8. So this is negative 7 plus 7. So this is 0 times 18. Therefore, this is equal to 0. So the answer is 0. Therefore, they are coplanar. Okay, so uh, that will be the last uh, problem for cross product. And now for the application. So usually in physics, we have different ways to represent uh, cross product in the phenomena or the physics phenomena. So with regards to torque, if you can remember in your physics class, uh, the torque of your uh, will be the torque is equal to the cross product of the position vector r and the force vector f. Or in other words, we can find this this uh, this this uh, magnitude of torque that is equal to the length of your uh, torque or the, the length of your lever arm multiplied by the magnitude of force and then its angle. You know? So the representation of that is this drawing. So let's have an example here. So a ball is tightened by applying a 40 Newton force to a 20.25 meter wrench as shown in the figure. Find the magnitude of the torque about the center of the ball. Okay, so we want to find the, the what here? The torque, right? So how do we find the torque? We have the formula, the absolute value of the torque is equal to, as we recalled earlier, the absolute value or the length of your vector r. So these are vectors, no? And then the length of your force, okay? And then your sine theta. So we have a given here. So we have a given length, no? So this is your given length. And then we have the given length of the force, or in other words, the magnitude, no? When we say this, uh, the vertical bars, mean different things no the magnitude the length or the distance okay. and then uh the angle here is given also as 75 degrees so we can also input here 75 degrees therefore the torque the magnitude of the torque is equal to we have 0 0.25 meters multiplied by 40 newtons and then sine 75 degrees okay so therefore, the torque here is equal to 10 sine 75, okay? So if you do not have a calculator, this will suffice. But if you evaluate this using our calculator, this will be equal to 9.66. Uh, I forget the units here now. This should be Newton meters. So 9.66 Newton meters, okay? Again. So if we have a torque here or we have... Uh, a directionality of this, therefore, we have to multiply this magnitude by a direction. No? So, therefore, we can say 9.66 multiplied by some vector n. So, your torque here will be equal to 9.66 in magnitude times uh, uh, a, direction, uh, a direction of n. Okay, so that will be all for this uh, video. Thank you guys and see you guys in class.